good performance. I keep on mentioning uh, these conditions because these are very much valued at the end of the session. Okay. The, the forces that I have mentioned earlier, traction force, gradient force, and uh, uh, rolling resistance. In these three, the two, the gradient force and the rolling resistance are based upon the geometry of the vehicle. Uh, based upon the uh, surface and the external factors. Uh, whereas in the air track, uh, this actually depends upon the shape of the vehicle. Let's say uh, you, you have a, a boxy car. The air track that the car uh, experiences will be large when compared to a aerodynamically designed car. I'll give you a formula that you, you, have, you might know it. Uh, from your uh, basic physics, it, the air drag multiplied will be the square of the velocity that which is the vehicle is moving. It also depends upon the density of the liquid in which the vehicle is moving. Let's say, uh, let's compare uh, two different vehicles. Uh, the car has to move uh, in the fluid, which is the air. But in case of a boat, it, ha it has to travel with a lot denser fl fluid, that's water. So in this uh, uh, two, two uh, comparisons, the air, air drag experienced by the uh, core is a lot lesser in compared to the boot. And the uh, front AF, the frontal area, it's, uh, that's what I have mentioned, the uh, boxy design. If the vehicle is designed in a uh, aerodynamically uh, feasible manner, it will contribute to a less air drag. If it is a, uh, let's say, uh, a car, you may have uh, known the car nano, which was introduced by, uh, by the company Tata, uh, which, which was aimed at economical perspective and not in a performance per perspective. Therefore, the uh, frontal area is kind of a boxy and it contributes to the measure of the air drag and it cannot move at a higher speed. I would like to uh, guys watch this uh, GIF, how the person actually increases his speed just by uh, changing his body's position. You could see that the uh, person has uh, changed his uh, shape so that uh, he can go, go, go take other riders. There's a person who actually uh, monitors whether the cyclist is moving in a fashion way. He's called as a pilot. You can see that he's uh, traveling the scooter in the topmost position. So the cyclist actually overtakes the, even the pilot. Then the pilot tries to overtake the cyclist by changing his position the same, same manner. But he cannot achieve the same speed the cyclist is uh, moving because the frontal area of this scooter is a lot higher than the cyclist. That's the major reason that the cyclist can go in a uh, greater speed. Yeah, now we'll discuss about the uh, different drive modes that the vehicle has to uh, be driven in the in this normal surface let's say uh, when you are moving let's say a vehicle is moving in a level road uh, at a speed of uh, 60 kilometers per hour uh, that will be uh, you are cruising at a moderate speed mode and the vehicle has to move not only in a level road but uh, it has also encounters uh, it, it also has to overtake other vehicles so the speed has to increase that's the uh, cruising at a maximum speed condition. Uh, the normal sedan cars not only uh, has to move in the level road, but also in the hilly regions. The hilly regions, uh, as I have mentioned, it has to cover a slope of 5 degrees as well as 12.7 uh, degrees based upon the uh, slope angle. So the 12.7 degrees will be the short steep climb. And the short, short steep climb, that's 5 degrees, is the long hill drive. 
So these driving modes uh, will be discussed in the further slides. So I have tabulated this uh, five driving modes as well as the forces that uh, the vehicle experiences uh, in, uh, in this slide. And I will discuss one, one column uh, at a time. On moving, the, when the vehicle is moving in the moderate speed, uh, the vehicle experiences uh, experiences following uh, forces: rolling resistance, air drag, and the climbing torque, uh, and uh, acceleration, and the speed at which the vehicle has to move. Uh, when the vehicle is moving at the moderate speed, it experiences uh, the rolling resistance. Uh, and uh, it also experiences a air drag. If you ask the vehicle has to move in a mod, uh, if, if you ask whether the um, vehicle has to climb a torque, it's not, it's not, uh, uh, it's not actually happening in the moderate speed because it has it's moving in a level road. So there won't be a the occurring of a acceleration since it's moving in a constant speed. There will, be, will not be an acceleration. So when the car is moving at a top speed, uh, the air drag that the vehicle actually experiences will be the square of the velocity with which it is moving. Since it is moving in a level road, there won't be any climbing torque or an acceleration torque, but there will be a rolling resistance acting on it. Next condition is that when the vehicle is moving in a long uphill, it will definitely experience a torque it has to provide a torque since it's uh, sudden, since it is uh, traveling in a uh, steep steep road. Uh, will the air drag be present? Yes, it because because it uh, encounters uh, encounters the uh, since it's moving at a speed, it will encounter the air drag. The, the rolling resistance will also be present there. Since the vehicle is moving in the road, um, then the condition we are moving to is short steep climb. Uh, during the short steep, we don't act, uh, we don't actually in, uh, move with a lot of uh, um, speed. So the air drag experienced by this body is very much uh, lower. The climbing torque has to be uh, higher because uh, you can see in the background uh, uh, a vehicle is trying to climb up a steep. Uh, slow it the torque has to be a lot higher when compared to the um, vehicle moving in the level road the next condition that i would discuss is uh, overtaking of another vehicle in the highways uh, so there won't uh, the vehicle has to move at a lot larger velocity so the air drag experience by it will also be the square of it uh, i just want to give you a a uh, quick example of a vehicle, how much will be the air drag experienced by a uh, experienced by a, a vehicle moving at a slow lower speed and a higher speed. Let's say a vehicle is moving at a 5 kilometers per hour uh, and another vehicle is moving at a 15 kilometers per hour. What would be the uh, velocity that would, that uh, both vehicle, what will be the uh, difference in the velocity? That the two vehicles experience would be the difference in the square of the velocity. That is, the vehicle moving at a higher velocity experiences nine times drag. That's the nine, nine times uh, more air drag than the vehicle moving in a lower speed. Uh, and I would like to give you a case study uh, to give you a knowledge which factor influences the most when you guys travel. Um, in the following conditions. So you consider a person who's moving, going from his home to college uh, to, to, to get some things. Okay. Let's say uh, he forgot his pen or something. Uh, he can choose two modes. One is uh, he can move in a, a lot, a very fast, fast manner, or he can, or he can move in a slow manner. Um, so, in which uh, which drive mode will the person uh, will the person has to uh, 
drive will the person has to uh, uh, drive so that the battery drains faster uh, i i just want to know which which of these options which of these two options will be the uh, drive mode which uh, causes the battery to drain fast based on your uh, lo logical reasoning you can uh, give your opinions One, two, eight, fast drive. Okay. Right. So the vehicle which moves at a faster pace will be the one to drain, drain the uh, battery first, because you are actually giving a throttle to the vehicle. This throttle actually uh, makes your uh, actually uh, gives a lot of uh, acceleration torque to the vehicle this acceleration torque uh, depend mainly uh, contributes to the heat this heat will uh, deplete your battery package uh, a lot faster than the vehicle just moving in a slower pace so this is actually given by a uh, fact uh, many factors uh, for this slide Let's say the energy consumed by the vehicle is watt hour per kilometer, and we will uh, derive the uh, factors that uh, with which the uh, motor uh, motor's energy consumption depends upon. Okay, uh, so if the, I don't uh, dwell upon the uh, dwell upon the uh, deriving factors, I will uh, focus on the torque. For the motor and the uh, gear ratio, uh, I would like you to guys to focus on the water per kilometer uh, at the top, bottom of this uh, slide. You can notice the energy consumed mainly depends upon the motor torque and the gear ratio, as well as the wheel radius. In this uh, equation, there is no mention of the velocity of the uh, vehicle. Does, the, does this mean the velocity, velocity yes. of the vehicle? So let me. Marie. So, yeah. Uh, you have to, uh, I think you have stopped the screen share. Yeah. Oh, sorry. That's fine, students. Uh, we have given communicated the message. Thank you for the prompt. Let's stop for the chat box there. Thank you. So you guys were able to uh, give this uh, answer for this case study. I I'll show you the. Uh, I'll show you the screen with this, uh, which uh, with which the uh, uh, drive moves actually depends upon energy consumption of the vehicle depends upon. Um, so I I like to fo uh, focus on the last equation. Um, the energy consumed by the vehicle actually depends upon the motor torque and the gear ratio, as well as the wheel radius. There is no uh, mention mention about the velocity of the vehicle. Uh, so it really uh, depends upon the motor. Uh, other than the other two factors, gear ratio and the radius of the um, radius, it really it's a geometric factor. But the torque supplied by the motor really depends upon the throttle speed. Uh, if you are giving more throttle, then the torque delivered by the motor will also be larger, and the energy consumed will be higher subsequently. So that's oh, that. That's what uh, I was trying to convey. Uh, sorry for the not sharing the screen. I am a bit of fault in my end. Sorry. Uh, and uh, this sums up the uh, lecture part of it. And uh, for, further, we will uh, on the uh, workbook. I would like to get, like you guys to open your book um, after uh, five minutes. Um, we will uh, gather up and uh, work on the vehicle and try to work on it 
will arrive at the vehicle performance uh, for the dry modes that I have mentioned here. Let the vehicle has to move in a level road. Then it has to climb a top, climb a steep slope. Then the vehicle has to overcome, uh, overtake other vehicles. Uh, so these kind of uh, dry modes will be uh, used to arrive at the vehicle performance. Let's say a torque speed of the torque and the speed of the vehicle. So this sums up uh, the lecture part of it. And I like the uh, uh, viewers to take five minutes of your uh, break. Then we'll gather up and work on the work. Is it fine? Yeah, so participants, as there are uh, any questions, you may want to use the chat box or uh, raise your hand and ask questions. Or uh, Suleiman, mm -hmm. should we go with the quiz? Well, what do you suggest? Yeah. Um, yeah, uh, since uh, I have uh, prepared a few quiz questions for the participants to answer, uh, you can, uh, Miss uh, Ma'am Sujata, Ma'am will give you a, a link or a, a, a favorite, favorable mode that she is comfortable with. I, you may answer the quiz questions. It will take around uh, 15, uh, 15 minutes in total. You can answer the quiz questions for five minutes and we will have a discussion on it. Uh, based on the lecture that I have uh, uh, given you, guys. Okay. Over to you, ma'am, Sujata. Ma yeah. Thank you, Suleiman. Uh, you can stop your sh screen share. Sure. So, okay, there were a few questions on the registration link, attendance link. All this, we will take it up right after the session. Once the speaker has finished uh, his uh, session and uh, you know the workbook is all done, we will take it up. So, kindly be patient on that. Uh, now, Kishore has posted a workbook link, but this is where the workbooks are to be downloaded. But hold on, on to that as well. Kishore, can you post the uh, Slido link quiz? Yeah. So you see a quiz uh, link in the chat box called Slido. Please post it in the live chat streaming also, Kishore. So uh, once you click on the Slido link, I hope all of you are able to follow my instructions. Click on the Slido link. It will ask you for an email ID and your username. Preferably, preferably no, uh, give I mean, mandatorily give the email ID, whatever you have registered. You know, that's when I'll be able to track who has taken the quiz. So give the registration ID, uh, email ID that you have registered, uh, used in the registration link. Register for uh, the Slido quiz and log in and stay in the browser. It will take you to the browser, stay in the browser. Meanwhile, for uh, the speakers and other champions, I'm sharing my Slido screen. Just give me a second. I hope my screen is visible. Yes, it, it is visible. So we see 55, 65 of you have joined quickly. Others, all of you join. So as we are joining, what to expect out of this quiz? Let me tell you, it is um, uh, it's questions just from the session that you have heard so far. So I, I hope you have uh, attentively listened to what Mr. Suleiman had to uh, present. So the questions will be an MCQ based questions and it will be a timed one. You will have uh, 20 seconds to answer those questions. So all of you at any point in time, don't come to your Zoom screen. Keep the Zoom screen on, you know, go, go keep uh, being on your browser, whichever browser you are using, Chrome or Internet Explorer or Firefox, whatever you are using, stay in the browser all the time. And all your responses will have to be given only on the browser and not on the Zoom screen. I'm going to just wait for a minute more, not more than that. Because there are not too many, uh, not too much of difficulty in logging into the uh, uh, Slido quiz. 
Kishore, can you confirm that you have posted it in the live chat also in YouTube? Yes, we have posted. Thank you. Okay, we have crossed 500, so I'm going to start the quiz. Stay on your browser once again. Quiz link has been given. Uh, Kishore, can you attend to the chat box? Okay, now there is a question here. It was for 15 seconds and the inventor of the motor car was all 58 percentage of you have considered it as Henry Ford. But the right answer here is Carl Benz. Okay, so now this has got, let me tell you, this has got nothing to do with the session. I just wanted to give you a trivia question so that you get used to this system. Now, this will not be given every time in the session since this is the first day of the session. Since you're all attempting it for the first time, I just wanted to get you, you to get used to how this whole thing works. Here I see that only 260 of you out of 705 people registered have been able to answer. So one more trivia question for you. Here it comes. We have 738. I hope all of you are able to answer this. I mean, it, uh, more than the right answer or anything, I just want you to get used to the system. So not bad. 537 of you have responded to this question. And let's see what is the right answer here. 60 percentage of you have got it right. So now from here on, it is going to be the questions related to the session. Kindly be attentive, be fast, and your name that is going to appear on the leaderboard is just not the right answers, but also the fastest fingers. So please be aware of, read the questions. Till now, I've given 15 seconds to answer these questions, but the session-related questions, I made it a little relaxed for you. I made it 20 seconds. So the first session-related question for you, here it comes. It's a true or false question. Okay, and the right answer is, so 33 percentage of you have got it right. So, which means only 33 percentage have listened to the session. So, moving on to the second question. So Sulaiman will be able to give you some explanation on all of these questions once again. Yes, so a large percentage, 79 percentage of have you got this right. Moving on to the third. <laughs> we discussed about it. Okay, the 19 percentage and 14 percentage, not sure how did that uh, answer come. We did, we did discuss about this uh, particular uh, point. Moving on to the fourth.
Wonderful. Fifth question. Twenty six percentage of you have got this right. The last question. Okay, so now you can just do an alt tab and come to the Zoom screen and see who has the uh, got all the answers right. Probably we'll give a discount on uh, you know the first two questions. But Farhan Shubhi, I don't know which college you're from, Farhan. Jay Prakash K, Nathan Abraham, Sushil and Bharat Sanjay. All of you, I don't know. You have not appended your college name, so I do not know which college. But, but this uh, leaderboard comes with uh, the right answers as well as the time that has been taken. So Farhan Shubhi has taken the, uh, got all the answers right, but in one minute and 37 seconds. So congratulations to all of you who have participated. Suleiman, you can probably discuss about those questions uh, now. I'll stop the share. Right, we can share the questions. Discuss them. Can you share the questions now? Yeah, uh, I'll probably share that uh, the video, the document that you sent. Is that yeah, fine? Right. Just give me a second. Yeah. So uh, there, there was a question. Uh, well, the truck torque is fully utilized for the vehicle. Um, so the answer is uh, actually why because the the motor uh, the torque of the motor has to pass through the gear uh, where there is an inefficiency. There will be a loss of uh, almost uh, five to ten percentage, and therefore uh, the there won't be a, uh, there won't be a full utilization of the motor torque to the wheel. So the next question was, uh, what makes the wheel rotate? Uh, it, it, that is obvious. Uh, it, has, it has to be a thought. Uh, it, uh, because the wheel, uh, it experiences, a, uh, it, it moves in a, a translation motion. But when the shaft rotates, uh, it delivers the uh, force along the radius. So the wheel has to experience, experience a thought. Can you? a uh, little thank you so this this question i have explained uh, sure. uh, is fri friction your friend enemy or a friend uh, as i have stated uh, friction is uh, actually depends upon the situation um, the friction helps us, helps the vehicle to move forward whereas uh, in case of uh, the, the friction actually uh, it, uh, reduces the efficiency of the uh, shaft to rotate. So it's uh, actually a frenemy is the answer. Uh, going down. Yeah, this I, this is a uh, bonus question. Okay. So uh, when, when the vehicle uh, rotates, uh, it experiences a uh, rolling forces, right? So it's may, it is majorly depending upon the surface of the road. But uh, when the uh, driver just this activity um, by uh, um, by checking his tire pressure uh, and inflating into a right amount, right psi uh, the vehicle speed can actually increase so that's a question um then moving down to the next question 
uh, this uh, battery consumption question was obviously discussed in the slide because it, uh, it really depends upon the motor torque uh, gear ratio and uh, it, it is inversely proportional to the wheel radius, the battery consumption so on. It, uh, so then moving to the last question, I hope. Uh, is it uh, right to say the attack? Uh, this air track uh, really depends upon the various factors uh, like uh, density of the air and the frontal area, as well as the uh, the air track mainly depends upon the square of the velocity of the vehicle with this vehicle's, vehicle's uh, motion. So uh, it really depends upon the um, th those all factors. You cannot actually give a the binary answer, yes. So that's it. So that's it. Uh, I'll uh, should open the workbook and uh, I hope you guys have your uh, laptop or uh, personal uh, ready with your workbooks downloaded. So I'll uh, share my screen now. So participants, I hope all of you are having the two Excel sheets that we were talking about, uh, the workbooks. One of the uh, Excel sheet, uh, uh, the name of the Excel sheet will be Intro to Vehicle Dynamics. And the second one is Play with Vehicle Dynamics. I hope the, uh, both the workbooks have been downloaded and you are ready with it on your laptop. See, this is a mandatory step. Uh, I mean, the focus has to be just not on listening to the lecture, but also work with Mr. Suleiman to have a hands-on experience. And that workbook, we are mandating that that has to be uploaded back into the, our uh, drive. Based on whatever assignment that he's giving, it has to be filled and the assignment has to be taken and you have to upload it back. We'll be verifying the content as well and then making sure that, uh, you know, you've attended the session. So kindly follow him. If the workbook is not uh, been downloaded, uh, I request Kishore to paste the link again in the chat box. That is exactly the reason why I keep saying kindly do not use the chat box for any other purpose. I may be a little forced to remove some people who have been repeatedly using the chat box for some uh, unnecessary chatting. So focus on the uh, chat box for looking out for the link where you can download the workbook and be attentive listening to Mr. Suleiman. Thank you. Um, guys, I uh, can now pull up your uh, books and open playing with Michael and Amish sheet. I'll walk you through how to use the tool to arrive at the vehicle's fix. Okay. And uh, these vehicle specs uh, will be uh, input for the forth forthcoming session uh, to arrive at the motor. And uh, the subsequent uh, lectures all also depends upon the um, vehicle performance that we arrive this, uh, during this lecture. Uh, I hope you guys opened up the intro to vehicle dynamics sheet. Uh, in this, you can uh, define what are the parameters that the vehicle has to possess uh, to arrive at the uh, desired values. We can actually uh, give inputs, uh, the gross vehicle weight and gear ratio. And I will explain these uh, Uh, hi, I'm Kannan. I thought before Suleiman gets into the nitty-gritty of the sheet, uh, many of you, I would uh, imagine, uh, are not very familiar with even Excel. Okay. So I'll give a two, three minute overview of how to use Excel. Um, because as engineers, most people think of Excel as an engineering tool. Um, if you, uh, for example, go to the cell D4, which is now selected, there is a number called 1000 there. 
Are you all able to see it? Now, if you go and click there, you will see that that box is enclosed in a thick line, thousand. Now, if you look at the top left, that is the location of that cell, D4. It means column D and row 4. That's marked there. And what is inside it? What has been entered inside it is given over here. Thousand. This is very simple, straightforward. Okay. But on the other hand, um, supposing you look at the cell G13, I'm selecting it here. This is column G and this is row 13 and this is the cell G13 and that has been marked here. And the number that you're seeing here is 114. But what was really entered into that cell is not the number 114. What was entered there is this, what you see here. G10 into D5 into D10. The number 114 is not an entry into the cell, but it is the result of a calculation. And the calculation involves the product of these three numbers. Okay. And if you want to know where these three numbers are, of course, you can go G10. Means this is G and then you can look at row number 10 and so on. But a quick way to see it is if you go inside the cell where you see 114 and just double click, then all the cells whose inputs are participating in this calculation will be highlighted. You can really see it. Mr. Uh, your mouse is not moving. I don't think. Uh... Mm, I am screen sharing. Okay, can you just stop it? And... Yeah, now it is gone. Okay. Can you now select it? Can I select 1000? Okay. Uh, now it is getting selected. This was yeah. not happening earlier. Oh, I see. Okay. So, this is the 1000 that I selected first, cell D4. And you can see that the cell I have selected is shown here and it is shown here by a thick box. And the number that it contains 1000 is what was entered. So, that's shown here. On the other hand, if I come to this cell where you see 114, this cell is in the location G13 and that is given here, column G and row 13. But what was entered into the cell is not the number G, uh, number 114, but it's a formula. That's what is shown here. And in this formula, which are the different numbers that are participating, you can find out by just double clicking here. You can see that these three cells are highlighted. Is this clear? So by multiplying the number 12, with the number 95% and with the number 10, I can get the number 114. That's how it gets computed. Okay. So now I come to the most important part of this Excel as a tutorial, uh, a tutorial to Excel. I will do it by using a simple example right here on the screen. Supposing I have two numbers. I'm calling one number A and its value is 25. Um, and another number is B and its value is 4. And I want to compute a number C, which is the result of multiplying A and B. Then I will say this is equal to this number multiplied by this number. And I get 25 into 4 is 100. This is very straightforward. Now, if I go here and change this number as 8, what will happen to the number C? It gets automatically updated as 200 because it is now 25 into 8. So, if I'm changing any number that was entered, like 8 or 25, automatically all the other numbers which are calculated from it will get updated. 
we don't have to do anything about it. As long as the formula is the same, the values will get updated. But now the important trick, which I think 99.9% .9 of you will not know. Supposing I want the answer here to be 300. What number should I put here? So you may think that I can go here and enter 300. But nothing changes. 25 and 8 have not changed. This is because you cannot go into a cell which already has a formula and overwrite the formula by putting a number. It doesn't work. So let me undo this. The keyboard way of undoing is control Z. So now I have got back the formula. I don't want to change the formula. But I want to find out what number should I put here instead of 8. So that I get 300. Can anybody tell me what number I should put there to get 300? You can post it on your chat if you want. Sure, many of you have posted it correctly, 12. But that's because this calculation is something simple. But here is the proper Excel way to find the number. You, um, how do I hide this? No, the stop bar I want to hide. How do I hide it? Well, here we go. Okay, so if you look at the top of the Excel sheet, on the left extreme, you have a, a tab called File, after which you have Home, and then you have Insert. Are you all able to see that? Now, if you keep coming to the right, you come to a tab called Data. I'm going to press it. See where my mouse is. Are you all able to see? Dr. Sujata, the mouse is visible? In the top, there is Data. Yes, sir. It is visible. It is yeah. visible. So please click on data. The moment you click on data, I have clicked it now, you will find in the right something called a what if analysis. And there is a drop down menu there. Go and click on the arrow. And that drop down menu has three options. Go to the one which says goal seek. Since I had already selected the cell here, 200, which is column C and row 29, it has already come there. Now, I want to set the value in C29 to 300 by changing the cell which has the number 8. So, I'm going here and selecting the cell with the number 8, which is C27. Now, if I say, okay, there, the number got changed to 12. Okay. So, remember, there is only one rule and there is an inverse of the truth when you're playing with Excel. Rule one is, if a cell has a number and if you change it, then all the other cells where that number is used as a formula, those values will get updated. You don't have to do anything else. The inverse of the rule is, if you are going to a cell where there is a formula, but you don't like the number there, you want to change that number, then find the number which you want to change to give you the desired result. In this case, we wanted to change the number H to give the desired result of 300. So go to the cell whose result you want changed, apply goal seek by changing the cell whose number you want to change. And that's what we just now did. We went to the cell with the 
number 200. It had a formula. We said we don't like the number 200. We want to, we would prefer to have the number 300. And we want to arrive at that by changing the cell with the number 8. And then that got updated. Fine. So this is the uh, methodology that you have to use. So if you understand how to use goal C, then you are pretty much there. Um, if you click on the uh, cell with the number 1000, which is cell D3, you will see here that the number 1000 is given. And if you keep moving the down arrow, if you keep moving the down arrow, you will come to the next cell, which is another number, that's a gear ratio of the vehicle. You will come to another cell, which is the radius of the wheel. You must notice that these are all numbers. Number means it is an input. It is not calculated from a formula. And you can go on this entire column. The way we have organized the sheet is that all the numbers here are inputs. They are not derived from a formula. Okay. On the other hand, in the rest of the cells that you see on the right, every cell is a formula. You can see very complicated formulas. For example, this cell, which is I20, you can see that there's a very complicated formula. There is square root, there is exponent, and all sorts of things. So we won't be burdening you with all these derivations. Um, but you can see that all of these are numbers that are derived from the formulas. The only numbers that are not derived from formulas, but which are entered as numbers, are shaded in gray for you to easily identify. So this cell shaded in gray is just a number. This is another number. And all the cells in this row are numbers. You can see them. Similarly, all the cells in this block will talk R numbers. These are the things that you can change. Everything else comes from formulas. Fine. So, um, based on whatever uh, Suleiman explained to you in simple terms about the forces that act on a um, vehicle, we have derived the formulas that you see over here for velocity and distance. Remember that force will allow you to calculate acceleration and then you have to do some messy integration with it to find the velocity and then you, if you repeat the same mess once again, you get distance. But uh, fortunately for you, all the dirty work has been done by Suleiman. You only have to use the work. And um, um, you only have to worry about what is the slope of the road and what is the motor torque and you will get everything over here. And if, if these numbers are difficult to understand, they are given here to you in the form of graph. How does the speed change with respect to time in seconds? This is plotted here. And if you scroll further to the right, you have the power changing with respect to time. And at different instances, uh, Suleiman was telling you about the different ways in which torque is consumed. So the share of the different consumers of torque is given in this graph. The blue band is the extent of friction torque. The red is the color coding for the gradient torque. Since we are not going on any gradient, you can see here that the angle is zero. So you don't see any red color over here. And then um, the gray is the air drag. Air drag is non-existent initially. But as the speed increases, the air drag starts increasing. And very soon, it becomes very large. You can see that. And when air drag increases, what is available for acceleration? decreases, the air drag encroaches 
into the acceleration torque as air drag increases acceleration torque decreases and at one point acceleration becomes zero which means speed stops increasing this is how the vehicle moves and uh, since this interplay between air and acceleration air drag and acceleration is something very interesting and that is what contributes to the dynamics of how the vehicle moves it has been highlighted in a little more dramatic way initially the acceleration is high and then and the air drag is very low too and then suddenly the air drag starts increasing and the acceleration falls to zero so this is the way of dramatizing that and uh, as time passes the distance covered increases it may look to you like a straight line but actually if you zoom in this portion it's a parabola and after that straight line it's a parabola when the acceleration is happening and when the acceleration falls and the speed becomes constant it becomes a straight line that's how this is so these are all ways of uh, looking at it and a lot of summary information when this goes like this finally when it stops increasing speed any further at that point what is the speed at which it's going is called the steady state speed you will hear and that is 73 kilometers per hour and uh, when it is traveling in this way how many watt hours per kilometer does the is the energy consume and that is 123 watt hours and if you assume that every uh, kilowatt hour is 7 rupees then it means that you will be paying 86 paisa per kilometer this vehicle for the electricity that is consumed and uh, this is probably a should be a gray cell so let me change this as a gray cell this is something you can change I'm going to go to the home position and pick this so this is also a great cell you can change it it's only a number but if you know how big the battery is you can predict what is the range you will get you will get 41 kilometers of range to drive in the way described here so this is broadly about it and now i will uh, um, i'll just like you to a little bit play by changing these numbers Supposing I make this as 4 degrees, you change it. You find that all the numbers have collapsed. That's because the torque is not enough to make the vehicle go up the slope. So never mind, nothing disastrous happened. Let's decrease the angle a little more and make it only 2 degrees. Even then, it's not able to recover. Let me make it 1 degree and see what happens. Yes. One degree slope, the vehicle is able to climb. But although the slope has increased to one degree, the range has not changed. The water per kilometer has not changed. I want you to see that. This is because water per kilometer depends only on the applied torque. So what is the effect of having a one degree slope? Instead of attaining a steady state speed of 73 kilometers per hour, we are now able to attain a speed of only 45 kilometers per hour. That's the effect of it. Okay. And you can see all these effects reflected in the um, top speed. Sorry. It's happening here. Uh, in all these graphs, you will see that all these things are playing out. And now the question is. If I want to go up a 5 degree slope, what should I do? So let me make this as 5 degrees. You will see that everything has collapsed because the torque is not enough to go up that slope. But let me increase the torque from 10 to 50, degree, 50 Newton meter. Now I find that the torque is way too much. Even on a 5 degree slope, it's able to go to 146 kilometers per, per hour. Now, supposing I say that I want to go up a 5 degree slope at 25 kilometers per hour, what torque should I give? This is where you use Goldseek. I go to the cell which is having the number 146. 
which is derived from a formula, but I want the result of the formula to be 25. I don't want it to be 146. So I go to the tab data and select goal seek. And this cell is already selected here, I-14. And I say that I want the answer to be 25 kilometers per hour. And I want to achieve this by changing the torque, which is 50 Newton meter. So I do this. And it says that at 24 and a half Newton meter, I will be able to achieve a 25 kilometer per hour steady state speed on a slope of 5 degrees. And let me click on the OK and scroll to see what it looks like. You can see that this speed is becoming saturated at 25 kilometers per hour. And at such a low speed, I will not have much air drag. You can see that the gray portion is very, very small. And a lot of the torque, this entire orange band, is because of the gradient of 5 degrees. And what is left for acceleration is also very small. The acceleration torque is very small. After a point, even that acceleration stops because air drag takes over. There is a um, friction torque that is coming all the time, but significantly there is a gradient torque. And the power versus time and the interplay between acceleration air drag and the distance versus time of the scene. So you can play with this and get familiar with it. Uh, and doing that, ability to do that quickly, ability to apply goal seek will be very, very important in following what Suleiman has to tell you. What is Suleiman? You can go to the other sheet now. Thank you, sir, for giving us a brief overview of how to and uh, we will further on how to derive the uh, spec sheet. So, if, uh, if you can open the other sheet, play with the uh, vehicle dynamics. Oh. Have you guys opened it? If you have opened it, you can uh, use the chat box to play. Yes. Okay, then fine. So in your sheet, there will be uh, only a rated, uh, rated uh, sheet, uh, peak speed and uh, peak torque power. Here you have a motor spec, as the uh, mentioned. So uh, if you know the these factors, you can actually arrive at the motor. What should be the uh, what should be the RPM, the wheel has to rotate, and the motor torque that the wheel that the motor has to uh, provide. We have, we can arrive, actually arrive at the power that the vehicle has to um, that the vehicle has to run. So uh, the rated condition, um, the vehicle actually moves in a level road at a speed of uh, thirty kilometers per hour. Uh, first, I'll define these uh, uh, values. Uh, this uh, this uh, value is actually for a three wheeler. Uh, which has a gross vehicle weight of 1,000, that is 1 ton. Uh, actually, the gross vehicle weight uh, is a combination of uh, curb weight and the luggage uh, uh, and the goods weight. So, uh, the curb weight is a uh, uh, load weight, payload weight, used to the gross vehicle weight. And uh, the gear ratio is uh, uh, used because the motor can only deliver a, a low amount of torque, which is uh, 
uh, multiply by using a uh, gear gear system uh, which increases the torque and uh, uh, the wheel radius uh, is defined by us uh, the typical uh, wheel radius for an auto is uh, 15 inches so that's why i have taken that it is 0.27 and uh, like frontal area of the auto wheel auto uh, is assumed uh, is and its, and its value is 2.5 uh, the drag coefficient uh, i tell you depends on the uh, uh, vehicle uh, vehicles geometry uh, same applies to the rolling assist rolling assist square so roll uh, found experimentally and uh, and it, we are assuming that the gear efficiency um, that we have at the max is 95 percent uh, because we are uh, multiplying the torque this is, this, uh, um, actually there are uh, uh, three drive modes that i will discuss here um, so actually uh, no two drive modes there's a rated uh, peak torque and a peak and I list down what does this four uh, drive modes mean uh, when I move the subsequent uh, sheets. In the first uh, sheet, uh, these are uh, we just require the rated speed uh, and the slope, which is the which is the um, vehicle is moving. Uh, if this is known, we can arrive at the uh, what, what should be the motor torque and this speed the motor has to deliver when it is traveling the level road. So uh, he, as Kansan mentioned, uh, these two factors are to be changed to arrive at the uh, speed uh, and the speed and the torque. Uh, so so that uh, we can uh, find the power required. Uh, these two uh, boxes are just uh, is, is just for reference because uh, uh, we have to actually integrate the uh, values that we arrive from the forces acting on the dynamic uh, vehicle and I have just uh, included uh, uh, the values uh, this is just for reference and we will be working uh, just working on with these two cells at max uh, we won't be uh, working on these cells this is, these are just uh, uh, values that we, uh, that we uh, get as an output uh, these two will be the inputs and uh, this will be the uh, uh, rated sheet. So as I mentioned, it is traveling in a uh, um, level road. Uh, there will be certain parts of this uh, road where the vehicle has to move uh, upwards. Uh, so the least, uh, so the least amount of uh, slope that the vehicle has to travel uh, is uh, taken as a five degrees, and uh, uh, speed which is with which the vehicle auto is traveling uh, is thirty kilometers per hour. So, um, in order to arrive at the speed and the torque, we have to uh, uh, put the goal seat uh, using the tab. Uh, I'll place it at the bottom of it. So, uh, I hope this is uh, visible. Uh, we will go to data and use the board of analysis uh, to arrive at the uh, vehicle speed. Uh, that is the rated condition. Uh, and the rated condition vehicle has to travel at the speed of 30 kilometers per hour. Uh, so, you are wondering. Uh, if the vehicle moves at a very high speed, what would be the torque that the, that the vehicle uh, uh, experience? Uh, this uh, this can be uh, viewed in this motor torque region. Uh, let's say uh, the vehicle is actually moving uh, at a 40 kilometers per hour, uh, and let's see what what will the motor torque that would that would be required. Uh, so we have to uh, select this cell uh, i 
uh, I-14 to a increased, uh, kilo, uh, increased speed and uh, by changing the uh, motor torque, we will arrive at the uh, uh, we will arrive at the uh, stick the vehicle is running in this condition. Uh, so when the vehicle is moving in a uh, rated, uh, rated uh, speed, uh, the RPM would be uh, 4,700 and the torque that is delivered is 25 at, um, at the power of 12.6. So I want you guys to uh, make a note of it uh, at, by creating a new sheet by pressing this uh, plus symbol at the bottom. So create an uh, out box like this, mentioning the peak speed, torque, and the peak power. I hope you guys can uh, uh, create it. Or I'll create it for you. XP. Big bar. Created. The peak top. So these will be the four drive modes which is, uh, we'll be dealing with. And in every sheet, at the end of every sheet, you have to uh, note down the RPM, the torque, and the power. So at the end of this rated uh, sheet, we have arrived at the motor torque should be 25. So enter the value as uh, um, 25.67 and the uh, RPM is 4,700. 4, so that should be entered higher. And the power required uh, is actually arrived uh, using a formula. Uh, that's the multiplication of uh, the speed and the uh, torque divided by the uh, along with the conversion factors. So the power required is the 12.66. Uh, moving to the next sheet that is uh, when the vehicle is moving at the peak speed um, let, uh, let's say the vehicle has to um, move uh, at the speed of uh, uh, 70 kilometers per hour uh, this 70 kilometers per hour how would we achieve it uh, this will be discussed now uh, during the peak speed uh, 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 steady state steady state speed would uh, will be changed because uh, um, we have to arrive with the motor torque uh, how much would be the torque that uh, the vehicle uh, uh, provide for its locomotion at this uh, peak speed condition the way value has to be changed uh, 70 uh, by changing this uh, cell uh, motor torque And uh, we have arrived at the um, um, uh, peak speed condition. Uh, vehicle torque is 9.53, and the uh, RPM that the uh, motor has to give is 8,252. Uh, this should be entered in the uh, last sheet 8,000. 8, And the torque that the motor has to deliver 
is 9.53. And the power that we arrive at is uh, 8.3 Newton meters. Uh, sorry, uh, kilowatt power. Uh, this or this this will be the uh, speed I, as I mentioned earlier. So uh, we have already arrived at the peak speed conditions now. Uh, so when the vehicle is uh, trying to cl climb up a hill. Uh, let's say a gradient of a uh, percentage. Uh, that's a steeper spot where the vehicle has to travel. Uh, in that condition, what should be the uh, torque and the speed the vehicle, uh, the motor has to deliver? Uh, that condition discuss now. Uh, during that uh, uh, peak torque condition, um, the motor has to run for just a few seconds. Let's say. Uh, you're stuck in a pit, then you have to climb out. Uh, that won't be taking a long time. It, it will last for only just for 2, 12 or 8 seconds. Uh, actually, this is an interesting test for a vehicle. Uh, it, it, this, this will be a more uh, of a stress test for the vehicle. Because uh, a, lot of, a lot of torque has to be delivered by the motor uh, for a shorter amount of time. Because, it, uh, because of that, a thermal uh, of the thermal uh, management has to be done. And a lot of heat will be produced within a short of time during this condition. Uh, there's actually an interesting uh, test conducted by the ARA, ARAI, that's the Automotive Research Association of India. Uh, you may have seen the vehicle is trying to, uh, may try to climb, um, up, uh, climb up a hill. Uh, so this test is actually done uh, by parking the vehicle just in front of a hilly, hilly slope, uh, the front vehicle, front wheel has to cro uh, cross the yellow line, which is uh, on the hilly slope. Uh, the wheel base of the uh, vehicle has to cross plus three meters. It's taken as a, a buffer, buffer uh, distance. Uh, if the vehicle crosses the wheel base distance under three meters, uh, it is certified that the vehicle is uh, uh, supposed to climb a slope of uh, 12 degrees. So, um, I want you guys to look up for the ARI capability standard list, and it's an interesting one to de define the uh, motor capability. Uh, here, this slope angle is taken as uh, 12 degrees, and the time taken uh, because since it is running at running at a lower uh, Look for a short time, the time taken to cross uh, a distance of uh, uh, 20 meters, that is the wheel based distance is 17, plus the 3 meters is for uh, uh, is, is a buffer distance. It will be around 12 seconds. So these three conditions were for uh, uh, for running at the peak power conditions. Uh, Slimer, can I intervene you here? Yes. Yes, okay, so the session is uh, until three thirty. Uh, how long do you think we'll be taking the workbook? Uh, yeah, uh, I'll I'll wrap up in just a five minutes. In just five minutes, I'll, and you'll give them the instructions on what needs to be. Uh, yeah, I, I'll give them. I'll give them uh, uh, values that are supposed to be heard here and arrive at the vehicle spec, like I have uh, arrived here. And this value will be and this value will be one as an the next lecture series. So in the peak torque conditions, uh, we, we have to uh, enter the uh, enter these three values: gradability, the time taken, and the length, the uh, rate. So the distance that has to that uh, a vehicle has to cover is actually uh, 0.2 meters. Uh, I'll I'll take the next next column, give you an understanding of how to use the peak torque condition. Uh, use the goal C and enter the length of the uh, the length of the grade. It is uh, it has to cross a uh, distance of twenty meters. Since everything uh, here is uh, in kilometers, I'll convert it into meters. That is 
to arrive at the motor torque. So the motor torque uh, that okay, we have to end, click enter. The motor torque that we arrive at is uh, 68.11. And the power and the wheel RPM that we arrive is it's much larger actually. If you have seen the spec sheets, it won't be uh, more than 7500. Uh, only for the high RPM vehicles, uh, it will be around 10 k or so. And uh, the peak uh, for the, and the power is actually 74.92. For the peak, sorry, peak torque conditions. Please. These are for the peak torque conditions. Uh, and moving uh, to the peak power, this is required on when the vehicle is uh, trying to overtake other vehicles. Uh, let's say a vehicle has uh, cover uh, a distance of uh, yeah, the vehicle has to uh, accelerate from uh, zero to uh, 50, uh, 0 to 50 in uh, 12 seconds. This is the thing the youngsters uh, require in a vehicle. How fast a vehicle can accelerate from the rest portion to the top, top speed or let's say 60 kilometers per hour or 100 kilometers. In this case, uh, let's say, let's take the acceleration, acceleration that uh, vehicle, the vehicle auto has to arrive 60 kilometers per hour in 12 seconds. So, uh, this uh, column of uh, 12, we can actually uh, enter the uh, we can actually uh, change the vehicle speed to 60 kilometers per hour to arrive at the motor torque. Every uh, sheet we have to actually focus on the uh, motor torque and the RPM and the power. Nothing else we will be taking to the next, next lecture series. 16 by changing the motor dot. Click OK and click on uh, and note on the values that I have that you have arrived. And keep uh, and make note of this because uh, this value uh, will be used in the next lecture. So derive the motor specs and uh, the corresponding RPM that we have arrived is uh, 7074. The corresponding power required is 18.36 kilowatt. Okay, so th this is the big, this will be the uh, input uh, that we will use for the motor derivation and I just want to uh, give a um, overview on this region. Uh, this value actually uh, signifies the vehicle has to move uh, as a, at the steady state of 31 kilometers per hour during the peak power condition. Uh, and the cap capacity of the battery is actually 6000. Uh, we will arrive at the uh, what will be the battery consumption uh, during this uh, 131 kilometers per hour steady state is uh, 306 water per kilometer. And the range that it can provide during that uh, consumption is 17 kilometers. Uh, this will, uh, and uh, I, I would like to give you a assignment uh, by changing these values. You can actually take a screenshot, screenshot of it and work on it based on the activity that we have done today. Uh, so I will give you the values now. You can take a screenshot of it. Let's assume this is for a bike and uh, the value is 250 for the gross vehicle weight and the gear ratio that we are gonna use is four, uh, four times the motor torque. And the wheel radius is 0. 0.4, uh, sorry, 0. 0.04. And the frontal area would be point, point 0.5. The drag coefficient 
is uh, 0 0.6. The rolling resistance that I am going to take is will be will remain the same, and the gear efficiency you can take it as 90. So for the uh, rated conditions, you can use uh, 40 kilometers would be the uh, speed that the vehicle is traveling, and uh, the maximum speed is 75. The grade at which the vehicle has traveled is 25 degrees, and the time taken to cross is very much uh, small. You can uh, take it as 5. And the length of the grade uh, that the vehicle has to travel from uh, front wheel plus the wheel base plus ex extra buffer distance is 6 meters. And the acceleration from rest to speed is 40, 40 kilometers per hour. And the time, to time taken to accelerate is uh, 5. Length of acceleration is 4. Acceleration from the rest to speed is 40 and the length of the grade is 4. So, sorry, 6. So, uh, this will be the input for the uh, for you guys to work on. Uh, whatever that I have given as uh, input during this lecture, this sheet that, uh, that we have, right, we used for uh, right, like the motor spec the for, for the lecture. Uh, I hope uh, you guys would have uh, known by now how to arrive at the vehicle performance. Uh, that's the uh, RPM dot power by now. If you guys any doubts, have any doubts, you can uh, throw in the chat box and I may try to clear it. Regarding this uh, picture, how was it? And, uh, you can actually uh, share your feedback. Can you me. go to that screen uh, where you have given the inputs? Yeah, sure. So they have to work on these inputs, right? Yeah, these, these inputs should be uh, the, sorry, sorry, the assignment. 0 0.04, 0 0.5, 0 0.6, 0 0.7, 0 0.8, 0 0.9, 0 0.10, 0 0.11, 0 0.12, 0 0.13, 0 0.14, 9.8, 1.2 remains the same. Okay. Uh, these are the actions, though. So, participants, if there are any questions, kindly uh, use the chat box or you can uh, raise your hand and I will allow you to be unmuted. The recorded class, yes, recordings, we will be sharing it with you right after this. The speed directly proportional to torque in all conditions from Lisset, uh, Kartikeyan is asking uh, Suleiman. Yes. No, uh, the motor actually delivers the torque. Uh, the speed is just a byproduct of the torque that the motor is delivered. Let's say a motor has to, motor delivers to 25 units of torque. Uh, with, without load, the, motor, the vehicle can uh, reach up to, a, the vehicle shaft speed can reach up to an RPM of 8,700. When the, when the motor shaft is attached to the wheel, the torque reduces and actually the uh, speed increases. So, uh, the torque it's uh, the first thing that uh, I have to focus on. It's just a uh, micro. I hope that clears. Can you explain the term watt hour or ampere hour? Participants, I see I will not be able to answer any or ask any of those questions. If we are going to ask so many, do chat box, uh, use chat box for uh, other things. I have told this to you multiple times. Registration, attendance related questions, I will take it up later. Hold on to it. Let's focus on getting some knowledge from the session. I hope I'm making it a little clear here. So, regarding the recordings, regarding registration attendance, we will give. So, uh, Suleiman, go ahead. I'm sorry. Okay. 
So you guys work on this uh, parameters, vehicle parameters that I have given you now. And uh, you will, uh, if you have, uh, if you have any doubts, uh, you can actually uh, send a mail to me, and I will try to clear it. This is my mail ID. You can actually send your queries uh, down to this mail. I'll check it out and get back. Yeah, can you just quickly give a, I mean, one minute thing on the assignment because I'm still seeing some messages on what to submit and all that. So you have given some uh, values. We, have, we can uh, submit the tablet column that we have ar arrived now. I, I, I have given you the how to use the data. Uh, let's say the rated condition you can just. Uh, you, can, you have to just uh, concentrate on this condition, 40. Um, they have to uh, click this cell and uh, click on the what if analysis and use the group C. Uh, use the value, change the value to 40. And uh, the box that they have that needs to be changed is a dot. So these things, this is the, uh, this is the output I require from them. Uh, output, uh, RPM dot as well as the um, power that is actually needed. This is this is just for uh, uh, just to understand just to uh, give them an understanding. But uh, we will continue the lecture uh, lecture series with the values that I discussed during this lecture. The things that I, the value that I have given. Uh, uh, The values that I have used in this lecture will be used for in the further classes. The value that I mentioned, uh, this is for the assignment. This need not be, uh, uh, this can be sent as an email. This is for just an assignment part of it. So that's it. Okay, questions on attendance, registration, I will take it up only after the session is completed. I've told this to you multiple times. So that is not important. Are there any questions for the speaker? If there are any questions, you know, if there are participants here, you want to unmute and ask, please raise your hand. I will allow you to unmute and ask your questions. And I also want few of you to uh, volunteer for summarizing for the next week. Assignment submission also, I will tell you how to get your recorded recording of the session also, I will tell you. PPT, uh, Suleiman, will you be comfortable to share the PPT with them? Yeah, sure. I can share yeah. the PPT. So I will send across the PPT to you. Please tell about traction in EV. Uh, traction force is uh, it, it is just the force that is required for the vehicle to move. Uh, it's the same with the conventional I think this there's no let me relieve uh, them on and take on. So what's the question? Traction, is it? Yeah. They say what okay. is uh, something about traction and EV? Okay, traction is the same as friction. But the thing is, when we say friction, we are used. Whereas traction is the friction between the tire and the road. And it is because of that friction that the vehicle. So traction is the is actually a frictional force. There is no difference. But that friction is enabling the vehicle to move, not opposing the vehicle. And uh, you have seen that when the uh, weather is uh, rainy and in some soft, crushy soil, if a truck or something gets stuck, then when uh, uh, we press on the accelerator, 
the wheel will rotate faster and faster when the vehicle won't move. This is because the friction between the tire and the road is very low when the soil is wet and uh, slushy. So unless there is enough grip which comes from friction, the vehicle will not move forward. Any other question? Please tell about BMS and EV. BMS. Yeah. Okay. BMS is about battery management system. We are not in this uh, series of lectures. We are not really talking about the battery. But uh, since the question has been asked, battery management system is uh, uh, a bunch of sensors which is put inside a battery and the battery itself is made of cells uh, and each cell uh, is connected to the other cells in a series and parallel connection together making the battery. But if even one cell misbehaves, is overcharged or over hot, higher in voltage or something like that, then it can trigger a Runaway chain reaction. Right. So you must have seen in Diwali, you have this series of crackers. Um, and uh, what we call as Ladi in Hindi and Saram in Tamil. And if one of the crackers is lit, it just spreads to all others and the whole uh, chain of crackers explodes. So in the same way, the battery can result in a serious fire or explosion if even one cell. So the main job of the battery management system is to ensure that every individual cell is charged with the correct amount of current to the right amount of voltage and that the temperature at every location is correctly monitored. And if there is a problem noticed in the then that section of the battery alone will be cut off and so you'll have a slightly less powerful battery but uh, not a completely shut down condition or a serious accident situation. That's the job of the AMS. Any other question? Yeah, I see some of you are raising their hands but your audio is not turned on so I'm not able to unmute you. There is Jaint whose hand was on. What are the major factors affecting the efficiency of EV from Syed Ibrahim? Efficiency of the electric vehicle. Okay. We all saw that. Uh, by efficiency for a vehicle, we mean typically what is the kind of range that you can get. Or in other words, what is the watt hours per kilometer? So, and we already saw that that just depends upon the torque. It doesn't depend on anything else. And the torque in turn depends upon the uh, driving style. If, uh, if I'm driving by increasing the throttle, I'll get poor energy efficiency. So when will I increase the throttle more? If I'm going on a hilly terrain up and down, then whenever I'm going up, I'll have to turn up the throttle a lot. So if I'm driving in a hilly terrain, I'll have a poor efficiency. The other condition where I will increase the torque is that if I'm doing normal city driving, but whenever uh, I find that there is 10 meters of gap between me and the vehicle ahead, I quickly turn the throttle to increase the speed, go near the vehicle in front of me, and then turn down the throttle and put the brake. So if I drive like that, then also I'll get a poorer efficiency compared to if I just hold the throttle at a reasonable level and drive at a uniform speed. So constant acceleration, constantly going up the gradient, uh, these are the factors that importantly will affect the watt hours per kilometer, which in turn will mean that the range of the vehicle will be affected.
Next why question. Is, yeah, why yeah. is still airplanes are not completely converted to EV? Oh, airplanes will almost <laughs> never be converted to EV. Uh, because of the weight of the battery. Um, one kilowatt hour of battery weighs about 10 kilograms. And the same one kilowatt hour can come from half a liter of petrol, which means half a kilogram. Less than half a kilogram. So, the weight of the battery for the same amount of energy that is stored is 20 times that of a petroleum fuel tank. So, if I need to carry uh, 500 liters of uh, petrol in an aeroplane, which will weigh approximately 500 kilograms. Then imagine the weight of the battery it has to carry. So it's not at all economical. And that's why, for example, drones. Um, if you're just going to have a small camera, then it's okay to have a drone. But uh, if you have an agricultural application where you want to carry a tank of uh, pesticide and go and spray, because the battery weight will be so much, you can't do it. So where weight is very important, um, electric is not a good option because of the weight of the battery. But yes, in the years to come, if the batteries become, batteries have been becoming lighter and lighter. Today's batteries are probably uh, four to five times lighter than what similar capacity batteries were about 10 years ago. So maybe as years go on, it will become more light for the same energy. At that point, things may be more economically uh, viable. Thank you, Mr. Kalan. There's a question Niveda? about transmission. Niveda, I would just allow one person to unmute. Niveda, are you able to unmute? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, go ahead. I ask you a question. You have raised your hand. Yes, ma'am. I raised my hand, ma'am. I have one question. Ask. Hello. Go yeah, ahead and ask. Me. We are able to hear you. Sir, what? Sir, what are the ways to dispose of the EV battery, sir? What is the way to dispose of an EV battery? Yes. There are... Uh, See, the manufacturer, manufacturers are mandated to responsibly take back used batteries. So whenever you buy a battery, you give it back to the manufacturer. He will not only take it back, he will probably give you some money for it. But after the manufacturer takes it back, what happens to it? It is possible to recycle almost 99% of the materials that are going into the battery and recover them for reuse. If it's a lithium-ion battery, um, this is possible. This technology is available. Uh, and it is also being practiced. Since there are not enough number of old enough electric vehicles, we don't have a large number of used batteries yet. But in the years to come, it is going to grow. But already people are doing this by using telephone and laptop batteries. So it is not that the technology does not exist. Thank you, sir. Yeah. We have a question on how to select a battery and motor relation. How can you do fast charging in electric vehicles? So if you can just quickly touch upon both, it will help us. I think in the next lecture, we have battery. Motor. Along with motor will be the battery. I think we are covering that in the next lecture. I think, Sujata, we have crossed the time. Any further questions, you can take by email or uh, and forward it. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, participants, what we will do is, 
next week we will start with some uh, little summary on what uh, what we uh, listened today and if there are any questions i will request mr suleiman to be there with us for 5 10 minutes uh, or mr kannan to be there available with us so we will take questions regarding this session again once again in the next week meanwhile you know complete your assignment uh, with this we will uh, i request uh, uh, r krishnamurthy rao to conclude the session today well it was a good session i would say it was a great session for a first uh, for a um, first time uh, performance and we did get a record number of uh, 1000 plus participants today which i think is a good uh, achievement i think we haven't got so many participants in any palsy event so far if i remember right in all the years so it's a record for us also in pals so that's good and as far as the lecture was concerned it was very interesting it was uh, it had a lot of uh, learning uh, capacity and potential and I, i would say that even myself after so many years of uh, being away from my basic engineering did find it interesting and was able to learn quite a lot of uh, concepts and you will also find that um, some of the concepts which are taught which were taught particularly about uh, mobility of a vehicle the forces that act on a vehicle which moves especially and the situation in which it moves like whether it's a level road or a gradient or a windy day or a normal day so all that has a significant impact on the performance of the vehicle and what are the factors that measure the performance of a vehicle are also taught in um, great depth i very thank i am very thankful to mr kannan and mr suleiman for covering the topics in great detail and also to mr kannan to explain the, some of the features of uh, excel i confess that i did not know what is goal seek till now i learned it only What now i didn't know that i used to do only trial and error to find it out all these days but um, thanks for uh, enabling that uh, learning so i would say overall it was very interesting very useful and uh, i would say it helped us to learn quite a bit of uh, vehicles i would urge all the students to go through the worksheets in detail re repeat the exercises if as, as necessary and come out with whatever numbers have been asked for we will and submit them so that we can take them further in the next exercise i am sure this will benefit all the students in the um, quest for learning about uh, motors and especially electric vehicles and all this learning i am sure will help them in uh, learning about the vehicles as well as in excelling in the interviews and tests which they would do in the final year for employment i i wish everybody all the best and once again my sincere thanks to the motors uh, team Uh, mr kannan mr suleiman and the rest of the team for the efforts they put in i also thank our pmo for uh, taking all the um, steps and precautions against various um, issues that could have arisen during the session today and i would say that the session went very smoothly so my best uh, praises to all of them to ensure that uh, everything went smoothly so thanks to all the other parts colleagues and others who joined and i found that and i hope you find uh, the lectures useful so with that i conclude today and we'll meet uh, next week thank you so well, before we close i want to say something uh, you see the excel sheets produced for the calculation they are really superb all the calculation you know the uh, formula and all that have been very well done and then inserted so that it is easy to calculate and work out thanks a lot thank you and in fact i will urge the uh, students in the session to pick any vehicle that they like or that aspire for maybe it's a uh, enfield bullet maybe it's a harley davidson or a car of their choice go to the website of the uh, company look at the data sheets and try to calculate the vehicle uh, specifications in the excel sheet which is in alignment with that and then see what kind of motor they should put they want to make an electric version of the thing that will be a nice exercise for them sure sir
Thank you, Mr. Kandan. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Uh, thank you RKR. So thank you all. I think uh, the champions and uh, team from Motor Z can log off. Participants, I'll sort out all your issue on attendance and feedback and everything. So stay back for five more minutes. We'll sort it out. Thank okay. you, Kelita. Bye -bye. Thank you, RKR. Okay. Bye, thank you, Mr. Kandan thank and you. Mr. Suleiman. Thank you. See you next week again. Thank you, Anu. Thank you, SKK. Okay, so we had issue. Thank you, Ram. So we did have issues on registration, attendance. Uh, uh, Kishore, can you paste the link uh, on the registration and attendance? So people who have not registered and who have been trying to mark attendance, yes, you will get an error. error. So ensure that you have registered and whatever registration ID you're using, the same registration ID is what you, you need to use to mark your attendance as well. So the first link will be the registration link. If you have already registered, kindly don't register again. Use just the attendance link. Use the email that you have used for registration. Give that link and then submit it. You can try and copy this link for some more time and keep it with you. But, you know, unless I, I see all your Slido quiz entries, Submission in the uh, this one, I will not be able to uh, award any certificate. So please don't even try to attempt sharing all of these links to your friends. I am allowing uh, people to uh, unmute and ask questions. So you don't need to uh, wait. You can unmute yourself and ask your questions. Saravanan, Narasimha Saravan, you have any question? So we had posted registration link and attendance link. There is a feedback link. Kishore, please post the feedback link as well once again. Ma'am, can we have a recorded session? Ma you will get the recording of this session. Hello. So just give me some time on how to figure out because the number of participants and I'm going to send this only to people who have marked their attendance. I'm not going to send it to the whole crowd who have registered. I will only send it to the people who have marked their attendance. There has been a lot of uh, chats in the chat box, but I'm, I'm definitely going to make a note of that. And those people are not going to be allowed again. Because we mean business and let's be very clear that whatever we are here doing here, we are, we are serious about what we are doing. We are spending a lot of time in making sure that, you know, you get a good value education here. Excuse me, ma'am. Yes. Uh, yes. Ma uh, yeah. Ma'am, regarding attendance, it's not taking, ma'am. What is it saying? It's saying... Uh, it's not uh, registered or it's not working error. So, which means you are, uh, which means you have not registered. No, ma'am. Uh, but when I went to registration form, I registered three, four times, ma'am. It said which participant I... registered, participant registered. What is your mail ID? Can you post it in the chat box? Yes, ma'am. One minute. Yeah. Same problem here. Same problem here. Same problem cannot be the case, Pa. It is working. There are so many people who are marked yep, their attendance. Ma'am, ma chat is not working ma for me. One second. Chat is not working because I have the same problem. Disabled, ma'am. Yes, ma okay. Ah, go ahead now. Um, ma'am, I have sent my email, ma'am. Hello, ma'am. Niveda, one minute, Niveda. Just give me a second. Which is your email ID? I did not. I'm getting see so many email ID. All of you cannot post uh, your email ID. Boss. Okay, I'm I've lost it out now. See, I'm not going funny. to do. I am not really going to do for all of you. Not possible. No, 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 no. Stop. Stop. Okay, I'm disabling the chat. No, not possible. Mine is funny. One double nine triple two. Great Gmail. I'm going com. to do it for only one person, which is funny. Yes. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. Ma'am, share your screen and do one. Then they will know how to. Here, model. Now, let me see whether uh, it is working. If it, okay, it doesn't work. It is not working. So, uh, boss, our link is wrong. Pa, I'm not seeing the event name and all that. Where is the link? See whether you have given the link correctly. Link is wrong.
no pa event name and date and time and all is not coming if it is not coming which means nobody would have marked the attendance today just give me ah, one second guys working yeah one second wait um Um, how can we get the other card and card attention, ma'am? Give me a second, boss. Give me a second. Let me do one after the other and then tell you. Madam, questions for assignment, madam. Sir. Questions for assignment. Assignment has been already explained, sir. During the session. the values were given and we are asked to cal calculate it uh, based on the values that has been given okay now i will show all of you uh, kishor the link is wrong whatever you have given is wrong madam you can check the mail madam that the link illa pa illa it is wrong hold on please it is wrong see see all of you i hope all of you are able to see my screen i am going to paste in another link now use this link wait do not chat anything this is the attendance link i'm going to paste go into this so once you go into that link you are going to get a screen with all of these filled the event name date and time if this is not filled if it's blank that means you are marking an attendance on some event which is not correct now i'm going to say i'm giving it funny 19199222 confirm attendance and i'm saying submit it said an error one second okay i think it is not able to take the load of the tick there are too many connections okay now how do i sort it out okay so i will have to figure it out on how to do this um, what we will do is we will post the link of this uh, session in the next session as well if some of you i'll try to figure it out and i will uh, try to sort this out for you and have you all attend mark your attendance next week okay ma'am so there seems you, to be an error there seems to be an error here so we'll try to figure it out okay ma'am thank you i am okay, ma'am ma ma but then meanwhile okay listen 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 hold on so which means you not mark your attendance but you can give your feedback the feedbacks can be given feedback link where is it kishor Or should I paste it again? One second. No, ma'am. We already have we have feedback, ma'am. Already. So I'm pasting the feedback link. Yeah. So this is the feedback link, and the Google form to submit your assignment will be here. So this use this form to submit your assignment. okay all of these i'll put it in an email to all the people who have marked their attendance and i'll send it across to you ma'am please do the ppt and the recorded link to ma'am i will share it ma'am the feedback the link is also not working ma'am that is also not working why right? i think we are not able to ma take the note it's working for me ma'am just now i checked it Please that everything looks correct. Love na. Yeah. Oh, there is some error coming in that also. I think the number of uh, connections is too much actually. It's not able to take the Loading load of. Loading little bit, but it's coming. No, too many connections is coming actually. okay so what you can all do is attempt it a little later i'll send it across in an email all of you can attempt it a little later okay by end of today you can mark your attendance you can mark your feedback i will try to fix all of this but try to do it by end of day today 
Is there any other questions? No, ma'am. Without a classes. Sorry? Recorded classes. I didn't get you. Resource for recorded classes, ma'am. I will send it across to you. Not by, uh, not now. I'll have to stop the recording, right? I'll have to stop the recording. We will stop it and send it across to you. It will all reach you. Don't worry. Any other questions? If not, I think all of you can log off. We'll meet on the next session uh, on the next week. Okay, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you all. Thank you, Kishore. Thank you, Lamna. Thank you, madam. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am.